example here, we're being asked to find the length of the diagonal side. This, if you notice, does not form a right angle. This is the what? A leg or the hypotenuse? <laughs> the hypotenuse. Remember, hypotenuse is C. Hypotenuse is always on the right side of the equation all by itself. And we look at what we do know. We know that this leg measures five units. We don't know what it is, inches or centimeters, so we say units. This leg measures 12 units. So what we do is we take what we know, A and B, these are legs, doesn't really matter which way you order them, and we substitute them in the theorem. So five goes in for A, 12 goes in for B. Notice, it doesn't matter which way you do this. It doesn't matter if you do 12 and five, five and 12, as long as the legs are on the left side, hypotenuse is on the right side. We know what the legs are, we're trying to solve for the hypotenuse, so we substitute all of these values into the theorem. 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. Always ask yourself when you're solving these problems. Before you start solving them, ask yourself a question. Am I solving for a missing leg or a missing hypotenuse? What are you solving for? Missing hypotenuse. That way you know you'll always be solving for c, for hypotenuse. For a leg, you'll always be solving for a or b. It's very important the way you set them up, as you'll see later on. So, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals c squared. We're trying to solve for c. Am I trying to solve for c squared? No. no, I'm trying to solve for just c, which means that at some point, I'm gonna to have to get rid of this exponent. We'll see who remembers how to do that. So, five squared is what? 25 plus 12 squared. So we get 25 oh plus 144 is equal to c squared. So we square both the values. Squaring means five times five, 12 times 12. In your calculator, you can hit five, and then there should be a little x2 button, x2 button right here on your calculator. That's to square. So once you square them, that's an addition sign. It's telling you to do what? Uh, Makes sense. So you get 169 is equal to C squared. If you leave it like that, it is wrong. Because you're trying to find not C squared, you're trying to find C. So we have to get rid of the exponent. Let's see if you remember the answer to this question. The opposite of squaring something is taking the square root. root. So we have to take the square root of this. But remember, what you do on one side, you must do on the other side. So over here, if we take the square root of c squared, we end up with just c. The exponent is gone. But if we do it on the right side, we must do it on the left side. So in your calculator now, you're going to take the square root of 169. What is it? It's a perfect square. What'd you get? 13. 13. Square root button. Oh, I'm sorry. Square root button is right next to the square button. Square, square root, square, square root. Okay? Yes. So isn't it just basically like a new way to solve this equation? I mean, it's not a new way to solve an equation. It's just a different type of equation. I mean, it's a theorem and we're solving equations. So if you already know how to solve an equation with an exponent, which you do, really all this becomes is substitution. You're substituting in. The only true way you can mess this up is by substituting these values into the wrong place. Like if I were to put 12 in for C, is that correct? No. no. These are the legs, they go on the left, hypotenuse goes on the right. Yes? Um, what would it be the same thing if you use C equals 5 plus 12 would be the same thing? No, it wouldn't because that gives you 17. Take the root of 17. Well, what's 5 plus 12? 17, right? C does not equal 17, C equals 13. That's why you have to square, square, and then add it together, then take the root. It changes things, it does. Because if you were just to do five and 12, that would say C equals 17, C is not equal 17. The theorem specifically says you must square A, square B, you add them together, that's gonna be equal to C squared. That little square, that little square, changes things makes it extraordinary. And you know what the difference is between ordinary and extraordinary? Just that little extra. All right. Oh, look, more cheesy stuff. Well, then. Yay! <laughs> All right, so here, I've taken this triangle and I spun it around and it stopped here. Make sure you identify where the right angle is and where the hypotenuse is. Look in here. What am I trying to solve for? Always ask yourself that. Hypotenuse. The hypotenuse. I hope everybody Hypot sees that. What am I trying to solve for? The hypotenuse. How do you know? Because this long side here does not form part of the right angle. Leg, leg, hypotenuse. So we take these values and I substitute them into the theorem. 
6 squared plus 9 squared, they're both legs, is equal to x squared. And the reason I put x instead of c is because they label it as x. We know it's c. We know it's the hypotenuse. They're using a variable instead. That's totally fine. I'm showing you all the different looks you can get here. Still the same thing. We're going to square them. What's 6 squared? 36. What's 8 squared? 81. That's going to give you 36 plus 81 equals x squared. You add them together, you will get 117 equals x squared. If you remember your perfect square, is 117 a perfect square? No. no, it's not. So make sure you pay careful attention to what we do here. We are going to take the root of both sides. However, I want you to do this. Put 117 into your calculator and take a root. What do you get? 10.81655. You get an irrational number. Because yeah. technically, although it ends in your calculator, that number goes on and on without terminating or repeating. So you have to kind of look at the problem. Most of them will just have you round it to a certain digit. For me, I'm going to have you round it to the nearest thousand, which would be 817. And then remember these little things? What does that mean, those three dots? It, it, continues. it, goes, it doesn't repeat. Not it doesn't terminate. It means it doesn't terminate. It doesn't repeat. It goes on and on with no specific pattern. It's an irrational number. It's a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. You have to include the dots. That's one way to answer it. The other way to answer it is to do this. You just eliminate the square and you keep the radical sign, which is what that's called. X is equal to the root of 117. Which one do you Two, either one. It depends on how they want you to answer it. Either one of them is technically correct. That's why you have to read the question. If it says, find the length of the hypotenuse round to the nearest tenth, hundred, thousand, whatever, you would round accordingly. If it says, just find the length of the hypotenuse, probably leave that as a good answer. If it says leave it in radical form, that works. Because that's called the radical sign. It's radical, bro. Yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, oh, bro. Oh, my calculator, bro. You guys are so wild. So so All right. So, so uh, anyway, hypotenuse. Questions on this? Questions on this? Okay. So, so, so. Mm. So I want you to look at something carefully here. Notice that we are given how many right triangles? Three. Three. One, two, three. Right triangles. We're being asked to find the length of x. Is that possible? Yes. Is it possible without solving some other things first? No. It's not. Here's what you're going to need to do to solve this problem. If you look at the bottom here, I know the legs, right? Mm -hmm. And if I know these two legs, I can probably figure out what the length of, we'll call this, let's call this, I don't know, we'll call it, we'll just call it C. I can figure out what that is, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I want you to look very carefully. In this triangle, this hypotenuse is also the same as this triangle's what? Leg or hypotenuse? No. Here's the hypotenuse for the next one, it's the leg. So by solving for this hypotenuse, we're actually finding this triangle's Leg. Then you repeat the process. Leg, leg, and you would solve for the hypotenuse again. And finally, you know the leg and the leg and be able to solve for that hypotenuse. Watch how we do this. And the reason I'm showing you this, this is the Pythagorean theorem applied. This would be easy. You have to know how to apply it to a greater, higher order problem. So we start at the bottom. We know that if we can find this, side right here, that allows us to find this side, finally that side. So we substitute into our theorem. We're going to have 3 squared plus 4 squared right at the bottom. That gives me 9 plus 16 is equal to c squared, which means 25 is equal to c squared. At this point, what do we have to do to get c alone? So you take the square root of both sides, and we find out that c is equal to 5. So if we know that c equals 5, we now know the length of this hypotenuse, which is also the other triangle's leg. So this whole thing right here is 5. So looking at the next triangle, do we know the lengths of both the legs now? Yes or no? Yes, yes we do. Bottom is 5. This is 12. So 12 squared plus 5 squared equals c squared. And you repeat the process. 144 plus 25 is equal to c squared. You add those together, this number looks familiar. 
169 equals c squared. We did this already. We take the root of both of them. c equals what? 13, because we already did that one. So now we know the length of that triangle's hypotenuse, which is also the last triangle's bottom leg. I'll wait for you guys to catch up your writing. You see what we're doing here? Yeah. By finding this hypotenuse, we're also technically finding the middle triangle's leg. By finding the middle triangle's hypotenuse, we're finding the top triangle's bottom leg. Once we know this leg and this leg, we can find that hypotenuse. So, 84 squared plus 13 squared is equal to x squared. Can somebody do 84 times 84 for me? Tell me what you get. 7,056. Oh, 7, oh, 7, plus 13 squared, which is 169, equals x squared. If you add those together, you should get 7,225. Yeah. Yes? Yes. 7,225 is equal to x squared. I'm going to go out on a limb and say that this is a perfect square, because I know them all up to 100. So if you take the square root of that. 85. 85. I was going to do it. But yeah, it's 85. All right. Yeah, so x equals 85. Great job. T. X is equal to 85. Good job, T! Oh Let's go! Let's go, T! Just one. <laughs> Questions on how we did this? Okay. Don't forget to like the videos, leave a comment, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe.